Okay, well, I thought I'd put together some videos to help you with the circulatory system, the cardiovascular vessels. So I'm going to start with the vessels of the thoracic cavity with all those interactions and connections that are therein. So here we go. Just like we did in, on the day of our class, I'm going to start with that heart. And then I'm going to draw the aorta, which you know you cannot use as a simply aorta on any of my lab practicals. So let's draw all the parts of the aorta as it passes behind the heart there. And I'm going to pass it on down through the diaphragm. So let me get another color for that. There we go. And let's start naming these parts of the aorta. That first little region, which I'm going to put a number one beside, right there. That is the ascending aorta. The little region on the top, and I'll label that with a two, is the aortic arch. Region number three, which includes the down sweep all the way down to the diaphragm, we are going to call the thoracic aorta. And then the region below the diaphragm is the abdominal aorta. And I can write that one right there where it belongs. Now, We'll go back up to the aortic arch and talk about the branches of the, of the uh, blood vessels as they come off of the arteries. The very first one that comes off, there are three vessels that come off immediately there on that arch. Now, I'm not talking about the coronaries. They come off of a sinus there on the, right behind the aortic valve. That's a different lesson. So we'll start with these three. The first of those three, right there, the first one in the flow of blood, which I'll label A, since we already have one, two, and three, we'll have A, B, and C. The first one of those three, letter A, is called the brachiocephalic artery. B is the, let me make that right, right, <laughs> right, no, it's left. Fix that. Left common carotid and C is the left subclavian all of these are arteries so I'm leaving off the A's which would be after each one of them now let's talk about what happens to C first it goes on over into the subclavian region under the clavicle and then it passes on into the arm that's a different lesson B goes on up into the neck where it splits into an outside part and an inside part that's in the head. I'll draw the head in just a minute. The outside part is the external carotid, which obviously means the inside part is the internal carotid. Now let's deal with A. A splits shortly after coming off there, and one goes toward the right, and one goes up into the neck and joins the other one in the head. So it splits up there, and it goes the same bilateral symmetry, just like we had before, where the outer one is the external carotid and the inner is the internal carotid. So the one I drew going up in there is the right common carotid. You notice it comes off the brachiocephalic instead of coming off directly from the aortic arch like the left common carotid does. The same story is with the subclavian. We have the two subclavians there. The left subclavian is the third branch off the aortic arch, whereas the right subclavian is off of the brachiocephalic artery. So there is what we need to know right there of the thoracic vessels. I've left off the intercostals and a few other things that we'll see in our, our dissection specimen. But this will get us through the human part that we need to know.